Hello and welcome to this video snazzily entitled how to shoot an epic short film in four hours with no money and I'll be honest with you the only reason I put epic in the title is because that's what every filmmaker on YouTube seems to do these days I don't know if it helps the algorithm or what but anyway let's get into it so recently I shot a short film obviously in four hours with no money and uh, it turned out pretty good I think and uh, it's been shown in a few places around London, so people must like it. Um, and in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how I did it, how I shot it, and the things you need to think about if you wanna achieve the same sort of results. And uh, in the second part of this video, uh, I'm gonna show you exactly how I graded it. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but first of all, let's watch the short film. It's only two minutes long, um, and here it is. Yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Let's get straight into how I did it and the things you need to think about if you want to achieve something similar. So first of all is the, uh, the idea. Um, and this idea came about because in the past I've struggled with um, uh, anxiety and I've had panic attacks and I can tell you they are not pleasant at all. So basically I drew from something that I knew about, something from my experience. Um, so, so I think that's a really good idea, you know, to stick to something that you know about. I was talking to this first time filmmaker the other day and his first script was like a, a remake of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I mean, get real. You, you know, I see it a lot of times with, with, you know, young first time filmmakers. They try and do some gangster epic or something and it, it just looks amateur hour. Stick to something you know about. So that's my first tip. You know, draw from your experience. Second thing is, keep it simple, man. You don't want to be having 10, 10 different locations, 50 actors. You know, um, in this, for this uh, film, um, obviously I wrote it with, f from one person's point of view. Um, I got the actress through a Facebook group. Um, we, we actually never met before filming. I spoke to her, I spoke to her only via Facebook and on the phone. And then the first time we actually met was on the day we were going to film. So we went, we got to a cafe and we re rehearsed. We talked about the idea. We rehearsed a little bit and then we just jumped in, shot it. 
Um, so, <clears throat> you know, try and get talent through Facebook groups or somebody you know, doesn't need to be the greatest actor in the world. Um, the, the other thing is in this film is I, I deliberately chose not to have dialogue because when you, if you're gonna have dialogue, you're generally gonna need a, someone to record sound. And that just adds to the complexity and you're never gonna do it in four hours. Well, you may, but it's gonna be a lot more complicated. So try and think of an idea that doesn't involve people talking uh, would be my tip. Um, so another thing I would say is locations. So if you want, so if you want something to look uh, as cool as possible for free, you generally want to, there's a car outside making noise, go away. If you, if you want something to look pretty good um, and you don't want to pay for it, then obviously you're going to want to shoot outside somewhere. Um, because if you want, if you want like fancy interiors, restaurants, then that's all going to slow you down. Um, plus also, if you're going to shoot something in your living room, you know, it's not going to look very good unless you've got a beautiful palatial living room, which uh, as you can tell by my crappy apartment, I haven't. I'm fortunate enough to live very close to London. So, and I chose um, to film in most pop, well, one of the most famous places in London, which was Oxford Circus and Piccadilly Circus, which basically what I'm saying with that is that helps the image, that helps the, the story have a more epic look as opposed to if I film something in my living room, it's gonna look rather drab and amateur. So, if you know, if you don't live near a big city, find something else like a beautiful field or a beautiful park at sunset or something like that. You know, try and be creative in your thinking about how can I have something that looks really, really cool, but it's free, you know? Um, this car will not go away. I'm going to stop this video until I'm going, I'm, I'm going to, yeah. Right, it's finally gone. Just coming back to story for the minute, you really want to write a proper script, even if the idea is really simple. Um, you know, don't just go out there and try and film the idea without, without something written down. A pro and, and ideally, you want to do it in script format, you know. Get used to writing proper scripts. Teach yourself how to write proper scripts in the right format especially if you're gonna work with an actor because they're gonna want a script. And if you hand them just some Microsoft Word document with some you know, notes on it, it's not very professional. So um, yeah, have a script because the other thing is if you try and go out there and shoot the idea without a script, you're not gonna have a structure to how you're gonna do it. Because I had the script, I knew exactly in what order we were gonna do things if we were gonna achieve it in the time frame. So yeah, that's a, another another quick tip there. Uh, what else? Uh, bu, 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 bu. So the most difficult part of the shoot was obviously on the underground. I mean, you really should have a permit, um, and if they know you're filming, you know you're going to get kicked off. The way I achieve that is um, by not having to record dialogue. Then uh, and it was just literally me and the actress, and I was using the GH5 uh, handheld. No big rig, no steady cam, nothing like that. And um, if you're not familiar with the London Underground, we anyway, we just got on one of the lines, the Victoria line. We went all the way to the end of the line. So there would be as minimal amount of people as possible. The furthest station away from where we actually wanted to get off at Oxford Circus. And then when we when we, we, we then crossed platforms and got the got the tube back into London, and then we shot all of that bit on the underground at the sort of very beginning of that journey uh, towards Oxford Circus so there'd be hardly anybody on the train, we hoped. It was a gamble and it paid off. But it's good to take gambles. If you don't take a gamble, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't win nothing. So um, we, filmed all, we filmed that stuff uh, before we got to Oxford Circus. And then it, again, it was another gamble because I knew I would have to follow her through the, through the underground station at Oxford Circus, which is one of the busiest stations in London and we just it, we just timed it so that as I said as soon as the doors open I want you to get up and, and go and don't worry about me I'll follow you and that's what we did and I've got the camera picture this you know I've got the GH5 on a little mini Manfrotto tripod directly to my eye because I don't use the screen I've got I use the viewfinder 
And then I'm, I'm just praying that as we're walking down the platform and taking different corridors and then up the escalators, I'm just praying that nobody crashes into me and ruins the shot because I wanted it to be a continuous take. And um, just ha as luck would have it, um, we managed to get the shot and I managed to keep it in focus. So again, it was just a huge gamble, uh, which I wouldn't advise people, you know, I've, I've made films like this plenty of times. I wouldn't advise you to do it if you've not made a film before, but um, we took the gamble, it paid off, and I think the footage turned out really, really nice. And then as she comes out the stairs, um, again, it was another shot that I don't even know how I did it. That Ox Oxford Circus there, if you're not from the UK and you've not been to London, that is just chaos, absolute chaos. Um, and the shot where I'm circling around her um, and she's like panicking, she's looking around at like this. Um, how I managed to get that shot again without crashing into anybody, I will never know. But we did it, pulled it off, and I've really loved the way it, it came out. And, um, and then we just, yeah, continued on down the road and she obviously starting to panic more and more and more. And I, I'm just following her sometimes from behind, sometimes from the front. Um, and um, as we got down, this is a, a funny end to how this film uh, ended. As we got to Piccadilly Circus at the end where she collapses, I had to do another circling shot, which was quite risky because she's in the middle of this little bit of concrete raised up, a pedestrian, and then I'm circling around on the main road just hoping, praying not to get hit by a car or a bus. Um, and again, the shot pulled it off, no gimbal, that's all handheld. Um, and But the funniest thing was, I said to her, you know, just wait there, stay on the ground, because I just want to go over the road, I want to get a more of a wider shot. And as I go over the road to get the wider shot, a group of girls think she's really having a proper meltdown, and they run over and, and uh, they run over and they they you know trying to help her and and I I go back over and she's playing along with it the actress is playing along with it um, so that was funny because uh, they were saying you oh, know we're calling an ambulance let's go and get you a bottle of water and uh, people say London and people are, are nasty but you know it's bollocks um, so yeah that's that's basically the, the the journey of how that film happened it was just one location the next location next location loads of risk taking it could have been a complete disaster. But um, I wanted, and it goes back to what I said earlier, I wanted to shoot in that location because with no money and just a camera, no lights, nothing like that, you need a location that just looks dope. And that's one of my favorite places in London for architecture and things like that. And yeah, I'm really, really pleased with the way it came out. So in summary, keep the idea really simple. Don't go overboard trying to make sort of a remake of Goodfellas, you know, keep it real simple, minimum amount of people, it doesn't even need to have an actor, it could be a story that without an actor, uh, but, but still plan it, write a script, know what you're going to shoot, know what you're going to do on the day, um, keep your equipment to absolute minimum, I would suggest, I mean, I don't like gimbals anyway, I don't like big fancy rigs, um, so yeah, keep it. Just keep everything. Just keep everything simple. In ter in terms of camera or stuff like that, people harp on so much about camera specs. It's completely irrelevant, in my opinion. Any camera these days shoots a good image if you know what you're doing with it. Um, I don't care about specs at all. Um, so yeah, that's it really. Um, and yeah, lo sorry, location. You know try and find a free location that just looks gorgeous. Yeah, if you don't live in a big city, um, like I said earlier, you know, find something around where you live, like some nice greenery or a, or a forest or, or something like that and film it at sunrise or sunset or or just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be a forest, but just try and find a location that looks fantastic, uh, that's free to use. So, like I said, there's going to be a second part to this video, and I'm going to show you exactly how I graded this. It was filmed in log, uh, vlog on the GH5. So, I'm going to, there's going to be a follow-up video where I show you exactly how to grade it, so stay tuned for that. 
and um, I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, I, I haven't planned exactly what I'm going to say. I'm waffling on and on and on. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, I love shooting this video. I'm really proud of it. It's, it's been really, really well received at the places I've shown it in London. I've had loads of people coming up to me because it, it had an impact on them. Um, like I say, I've no, I know about anxiety and, and uh, panic attacks and um, yeah, it's hardcore, man. Hardcore. Hardcore shit. So yeah. All right, send this video. See you on the next one.